the the assassination of Nasrallah is I, I an mean, uh, extraordinary um, escalation in and of itself, um, and uh, yeah, it's I think it's taken a lot of people very much by surprise, Alex. Yeah, um, I mean, I, it seemed to me that uh, it was widely considered to be Hasbara Israeli propaganda. Um, it's shocking to me that this happened. Um, mm -hmm. and it's also shocking to me that, uh, they had the intelligence capabilities to, you know, find out where he was when mm -hmm. they allegedly had no idea October 7th was coming. We all know that that's, uh, far they from don't the know truth. where the hostages are. They don't know where the hostages are, but they do when Nasr do know precisely right. where Nasrallah is sleeping and how deep underground he is, so they know how many uh, explos uh, how much explosives to use to kill him. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, and I think that this is the it, 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 this is just like the latest kind of audacious strike by Israel in the past two weeks. We had the uh, the Pager incident, which we uh, discussed, uh, where um, Israel blew up a large number of um, pager uh, devices um, owned by people across Lebanon and then did so with uh, domestic um, devices in which they uh, previously secretly implanted explosives um, just to terrorize um, the population. Um, they have managed to assassinate um, most of Hezbollah's like senior public command structure. Um, in the, uh, which is given that they've been trying to do this for for literally decades, um, it's quite extraordinary. Like particularly now, when um, yeah, but they, they're teetering on the brink of an all-out invasion of of Lebanon, which they by are, are, are by no means certain to win um, without massive U.S. assistance. So I mean, I think that the the, the calculation from Israel's perspective here is that basically, well. They can't, the resistance can't escalate in response to this, or if they do, it plays into our hands because, um, of course, uh, it is a rapidly impending US presidential election. Some of our, our viewers may be aware of that. Um, and uh, yeah, um, in, in this period, Israel knows that anything other than um, the most rabid and effusive and uh, 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 deep and exorbitant uh, support um, from uh, you know, to, to Israel at all times is going to be like kind of unsayable publicly. So they know that they can get away with a lot, and the US will be the, the, be there to send in cavalry if necessary. Um, and I think that the resistance so far has focused on attempts uh, on kind of almost a, a kind of an escalatory de-escalation with if you push us too far, we will respond, but. Um, for the most part, we're going to be like slowly grinding down your um, uh, uh, military capabilities. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I think that I think that Israel has made a calculation. Well, Netanyahu perhaps um, so has made a, a calculation that this was one way or another a safe thing to do. Um, it is no. I mean, given that Hezbollah is this huge force, not only within um, the, the, the Lebanese military, but and uh, but also within society, like culturally, politically, um, they are integrated within Lebanese society by taking out their leader. And so, I mean, it's up there with like uh, you know the assassination of JFK. But in, yeah. terms, in terms of its in terms of its significance to people in Lebanon, well, um, and then you have all of these air the, 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 the followed by this this wave of airstrikes. Um, we've got some footage we can play. Um, subsequently. I mean, it's 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 insane. Yeah, I, I remember being uh, slightly irritated at the time of the assassination of Qasem Soleimani at all of the overnight Soleimani experts because, you know, it was clear to me that none of them had really ever heard of this man <clears throat> prior. Um, with Nasrallah, it's quite different. Uh, it's difficult yeah. to overstate how significant he was. Um, there's been uh, we um, close to a week-long days of mourning announced in Iraq, um, in uh, mm. Iran, and in Lebanon, um, and uh, presumably Syria too. I can't remember if I read that in, in the article I read. Um, where in Syria, you know, it's he was next to Vladimir Putin, probably the most responsible person for 
preventing the collapse of the Syrian of the country mm-hmm. into uh, a jihadist run caliphate, a U.S. backed jihadist run caliphate, where you know yeah. they might cut your head off for um, doing what we do on the show, smoking cigarettes. Um, yeah. Of course, well, these we, are I mean, real you know, cigarettes like, you, for, for advertisement <laughs> purposes, but. <laughs> But, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. The, I mean, they're ho- they're hologrammatic, actually. But, I mean, I think. I mean, in terms of in in Syria and many other parts of, of, of West Asia that were affected by the crisis, like Hassan is a very popular name for newborn baby boys, um, and that's not a, a coincidence. Um, yeah, I mean, he was a, a considered a towering figure within within Lebanon and the wider um, uh, West Asian region. Um, uh, really, you know, an, an inspiration and um, and, and model that um, the, the other sort of follow. Um, I mean, and I think as well that what's really interesting, um, and this is something I've posted that's gone viral, um, if you could just go down, Alex, to this clown Farid al Malul, his tweet on Syrians in northwest Syria celebrating rumours of, of Nasrallah's killing. Um, what's sure. really, yeah, thank you, thank you. What's really striking is that the when I caught wind of this, I mean, it, it did not mean the six, my Twitter feed was going wild with footage like this, allegedly of Syrians celebrating Nasrallah being killed. Like, it was like wall-to-wall posts of this. Now, um, if you go down to my tweet below that, Alex, right, um, please... Yeah, I'm. I'm working on. It. Just you can keep going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. So it's like the, the, so the, 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 clearly the, 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 the powers that be wanted to frame the narrative that people in West Asia were cheering uh, Nasrallah's death. Um, if you, um, I previously reported on leaked documents um, uh, related to the internal workings of an organization known as Global Strategy Network, which was founded by Richard Barrett, a longtime MI6 operative who ran. Um, the agency's torture program during the war war on terror, um, he set up this communications consultancy called Global Strategy Network. I mean, you know, a name that that signifies means nothing. Now, um, they carried out wide ranging information warfare and psychological um, warfare in uh, from the earliest days of of the the Syrian civil war. Uh, They were embedded with the opposition. Now, um, yeah, if you click on the, the supplied image, there is this quite incredible excerpt one of their files where they boast about how after um, uh, the very popular Iranian general um, Soleimani was killed in uh, in January 2020 in a U.S. Uh, drone strike, um, they staged these scenes of Syrians celebrating his death, which then went viral and got retweeted by then CIA chief Mike Pompeo and like all this other stuff. So. Um, it's it's it is actually a testament to how significant and how popular Nasrallah was that there was a media effort, no doubt again by British intelligence, by CIA propagandists and Mossad propagandists, to frame this as something being celebrated, which should tell you how significant um, uh, what a blow it is. And uh, yeah, I mean, it is it is an enormous blow to. Um, uh, to Hezbollah, I mean, on top of all the other stuff that's happened, and I do, I do think it is the precursor to um, a uh, invasion of Lebanon. And there is um, the Jerusalem Post has conveniently the Jerusalem Post being this pure awful Zionist publication. Oh, I'm sorry, they removed it from. Oh my God, they removed it from the internet. You got a bad link here. No way. No way. Oh my God! Right, so well, let's, this is, this uh, is breaking let's find the archive. This is breaking. This is in breaking real time, news, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Jerusalem Post published an article on its website asking, "Is the land of Lebanon promised to Jews in the Bible?" And it set out in detail why the whole of Lebanon belongs to the Jews and will be theirs, based on the and based this is, on we have the archive up the, the Bible. Yeah. And they've removed it from the internet now. That's 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 unbelievable. Yeah. Like like literally like like they, the, within. It's actually line, kind of believable. Where, <laughs> where, where, where it's completely believable. Like <laughs> the, yeah, the, 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 they literally raises the age old question regarding whether regarding the northern borders of biblical Eretz Israel, um, and it's like, are we obligated to conquer those areas? As I said on Twitter, and I will repeat it again. 
they are an armed cult. Yeah. These people are insane. They're completely insane. Oh, yeah, and, and I, they've, got I, 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 they've got nukes. They've got nukes. Yeah. Well, and I just, I mean, I, I don't want to gloss over <laughs> the destruction that has already occurred here. Um, yes. So as, as you found earlier today, the Lancet, the medical paper, estimates that it will be 335,000 dead people in Gaza – uh, by the end of the yeah. year, and this was this is from the um, from the United Nations. It was published Friday, um, so this was before the assassination. Um, at least seven hundred lives have been lost. This is in Lebanon. At least seven hundred lives have been lost. Thousands have been injured, and nearly one hundred and twenty thousand people have been displaced. With these numbers continuing to rise as we speak. In total, since October of 2023, more than 1,500 civilians have been killed and over 200,000 people have been forced to flee their homes. Again, that's just Lebanon. They're also, you know, carrying out ethnic cleansing to a much greater scale in Gaza and and additionally in the West Bank. So to your point of an armed cult, uh, really an armed doomsday cult when you when you consider it. Yeah, it's like an fully. armed death cult. And yeah. Bringing, they, they literally the, like there. There is this um, Israeli military strategist called Martin Kreber, who said of the Samson strategy, which is that if Israel is ever threatened, then it will just start start nuking um, everyone um, to bring the whole dark world down with them. And it's like they will do this. They will like they they they're, they're insane. Um, and yeah, the fact that the Jerusalem Post just thought to like casually just publish this like lengthy guide about how like Lebanon actually belongs to the Jews and they're biblically obligated to conquer it. Like they just, yeah. just you know, I mean what country does that? Like, yeah. like can you can you imagine? God. Like, so yeah, as um, you can see yeah. the article is archived here. Uh some real time and this, journalism. And this is the thing, this is the thing, right? So these are the these are the the people quote unquote who are fighting terrorism, right? If you go on to, to the Jonathan Cape Cook post that I've that I've shared in the, in the show notes. Yep. Go down to the very go down to the very bottom. I'm gonna be smoking a lot today. This is the Jesus Christ. Um yes, yeah, so if you go down this is a this is like a brief kind of post on on how insane Israel's assassination of Nasrallah is. Zoom in on the very bottom, please, Alex. The Jonathan K. Cook is a, a veteran British journalist who lived in Palestine for many years. Um, is married to a Palestinian. Does great journalism. Worthy, all, always worthy of your time. Always worth, um, worthy of your support. Um, he felt the need to add at the end of this disclaimer. Bearing in mind he lives in the UK now. Nothing in this post, in line with Section 12 of the UK Terrorism Act, in any way indicates or should be seen to be encouraging support for any group designated as a terrorist organization by the British government. It is 2024 and people in the UK, citizen journalists in the UK, feel the need to add legal disclaimers in factual articles about what's happening in a war, lest the British government come after them for quote unquote, supporting terrorism. Yeah. It's where we are. Yeah. Ugh. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit more about some of your previous work on uh, British yeah. intelligence in Lebanon? Because I saw some people in the comments uh, were yes. reminded of that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, awesome. And I think that the um, yeah. So if you um, just go to my just go to my um, thread thread. Um, it, 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 this is um, and I I would urge your viewers to uh, sorry your viewers our, our viewers our viewers. Um, that to uh, to read these in full because I mean AI wrote them and they're brilliant of course but I think it's just really important to understand more widely the way that Britain infiltrates foreign security military and intelligence services and that they don't need a lot of people to do it to take over these agencies so that very first article it's it's it, it is about this really quite extraordinary effort that the Brits the British government runs entirely in secret. Lebanese 
public don't know about this. The British public don't know about this. But the, the Lebanese government has a standing agreement with Britain for Britain to insert um, advisors into they're pretty much every security and intelligence agency. So they send their British tech, spying technology and they send like four or five contractors who are all like ex MI6 or ex GCHQ and they go and embed themselves in these agencies. And like it's it, 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 thereafter, those agencies effectively act as if they're on, they are under, under direct British control. And there are references in the lead files to them like by implication getting rid of Lebanese officials who were not happy about their presence there okay so this is something which like nobody knows about um, like, apart from a very 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 select few number of people and Britain has these kind of arrangements like all over the world right so I think that this is a very but, but just more in, in terms of understanding in the, the direct relevance to like the war the war the war with Hezbollah is I think it is quite likely that the British um, provided Nas um, Israel with information on Nasrallah. They did the same for Sol the Soleimani in Iraq, um, and they are using their Cyprus spy base to die to fly spy flights over Lebanon to spy on Hezbollah. So it is to be assumed that they are providing all of this in intelligence to Israel, and it is to be assumed that in the event of an actual war, the Lebanese government will be effectively supporting Hezbollah's defeat under British direction. And as we've discussed in previous episodes, Alex, um, there's uh, an article I wrote for The Cradle recently, which again, I would urge people to read, which is secretly shroud British military actions in Lebanon. The British were seeking a, a agreement with the government of Lebanon to allow British soldiers to travel anywhere they liked armed on Lebanese territory and be immune from prosecution for any crime. Um, why might you want a bunch of your soldiers with their guns wandering around Lebanon? Um, oh, like to start like another war, um, as uh, Robert Peston, uh, a, long, a veteran British client journalist, said was coming on October 8th, just over 24 hours after Al Aqsa blood started, yeah. uh, based on British intelligence sources. How yeah. did they know? Um, and I just think that, yeah, it's just it, it, they, they, the, the British do this in a number of countries, but the ultimate. In, in, in Lebanon, the ultimate victims are the Palestinians, as ever. And so, like you have, Le like Lebanon's internal security forces are trained by this um, British contract called Simon, which is run by a veteran um, Northern Irish cop called Jonathan McIver. Um, if you know anything about what the British were doing um, to uh, Catholics during the Troubles, um, they did so like well into the 90s, um, it should come as no surprise for you that Lebanon's um, ISF has been repeatedly accused very plausibly of employing absolutely broad, brutal torture methods. Um, the Palestinian Authority uh, it also employs brutal uh, torture methods against Palestinian detainees. Um, and they were also trained by Jonathan McIver so, and it's just like, the, 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 uh, there's another article quite cited in that um, uh, thread that I posted about how Asa and Stanley, the awesome investigative journalist about electronic intifada, and I, we exposed how M6 trains and arms the Palestinian Authority and effectively directs them at the Palestinian Authority as this illegitimate Zionist um, construct that routinely oppresses the, the, the Palestinians and is heavily aligned with Tel Aviv's, basically does Tel Aviv's dirty work for them often. Um, I've also exposed from interest how a lot of the MI6 officials who are involved in spying on Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank and Palestinian refugees were also um, ended up running Britain's dirty war in Syria and running all of the extremist groups that were that they were using as, sh as shock troops to get rid of Assad. Ask yourself why. Yeah. Well, excellent work um, by reading. Kit Clarenberg, you can be more informed on the British government conniving than 99% of the British population. So I encourage everyone to do so. Hey, everyone. Um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.